Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the Dungeon Master here with another video. We're gonna do something a little different this week. We're gonna talk about my Dungeon Master bug out bag. Coming right up after the intro. Stick around. So lately I've been kind of obsessed with this idea of a portable GM takeaway kit, something that I could, you know, take with me in an emergency. Like you see in the survival videos uh, online on YouTube all the time, people, you know, they talk about this uh, per survival and preparedness. They talk about this thing called a bug out bag, where it's in an emergency, you could grab this bag uh, and survive for anywhere, you know, 36, 72 uh, or, or more hours without, you know, external help or support. So in case of an environmental emergency or government shutdown, something like that. Um, I've, I've long seen videos on these things, so I was, I was wondering, you know, I, I've, I've seen videos in the past by people, you know, the likes of Fistful of Dice, Sly Flourish, and others who've come up with these, like, convention kits or minimalist DM kits to take with them places. So I figured I'd do, you know, my spin on it, my take on it, and um, so I've been thinking about it, I've been putting some things together, and I think I've come up with me, with, for me, a, a small enough kit where I'd be happy, you know, to go to a player's house and have everything that I could conceivably need to run a three or four hour dungeon master uh, dungeon master game or Dungeons and Dragons game, I mean, excuse me. And I did it this Friday night, two days ago, and it worked, and it worked brilliantly. And I figured now is a good time, as good a time as any, to share with you what I put in my kit to take with me when I go to a friend's house or a friendly local game store, or if I go to an event like I did earlier this year when I went to the uh, Drinking and Dragons event. I wasn't a dungeon master at that game, but I used a similar kind of loadout. I, I didn't bring much with me and I didn't need much. As a player, you really only need dice and a couple pencils, typically. Um, so what I want to try to convey in this video is just, this is no, by no means a rule. It's a, it's, there's nothing hard and fast about it. It's an evolving thing. It's something that can change over time. And I think that that's more important than sticking to one notion of something. So I'm gonna, I, I kind of got a loose outline of what I'm gonna go through here. And you know, if you see something in this video that I use that you don't, or you know, if I'm missing something that you think would be a great idea, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. I'm, I'm always looking for new stuff to throw in here. I'm trying not to use too, anything too fancy in this, you'll see from this the contents of this video. Well, we'll just get into it and I'll show you some of the stuff that I got, okay? So first and foremost, I need to know what I'm gonna do when I go to a friend's house. If I am I, am I running an adventure that's been prepared? Have we discussed anything beforehand? Have I come up with an idea, a dungeon that I've designed perhaps that I want the, you know, that I wanna use? Um, I designed a Dwarven Vault not too long ago. You saw it on my channel, my video for uh, my Dwarven Trap, my Puzzle Room slash Trap. I haven't used it yet, and you know, that's that's one idea for an adventure that I could do, I just haven't turned it into anything yet. And um, what got me scratching my head about the best things to do, and I've recently started another, uh, my home group campaign kind of fell apart because everybody's schedules were just no longer working. And I, a couple of guys from that campaign were able to still play. We decided to start something new and put that campaign on hold and I decided to run them through the starter set. And I realized, uh, you know, kind of, I share the opinion of many others when I realized this is perhaps my favorite adventure for fifth edition. The Lost Mine of Fandelver, I've run it now five or six times and I'm considering running it again. I just got recently some of my friends into playing Dungeons and Dragons for the first time. The same group that I mentioned on Friday night and um, we did something different. I made up an adventure on the spot, but I actually ripped the adventure straight from part one of The Lost Mine of Fandelver. I took the Goblin Arrows chapter where they found the dead horse on the trail. Spoilers, by the way, if you haven't yet played The Lost Mine of Fandelver. Um, they found the horse on the road, the Goblin Cave up the road. I didn't use the actual cave. I used another my, uh, map from a... Um, a person known as a, a Two Minute Tabletop, uh, their website, twominutetabletop.com, I'll put the link in the description below. They have great uh, hand-drawn maps um, and uh, you know digital art map packs and stuff, very cheap, that are really high quality and I really enjoy their art, their art, their art style, so I use their maps. Um, my personal opinion though, this this adventure, The Lost Mine of Fandelver, is, it needs a little tweaking here or there, but you can pretty much run the adventure as is, and this, I mean, compared to an adventure, say, you have Out of the Abyss, which is a, a, another great adventure, but 
look at that. It's so much more thin. And for introducing players to new players to the game, especially, I don't think this adventure can be beat. In my opinion, it's because it's so well designed. Um, I, on the other hand, the, you know, as a contrast to that statement, when I run this adventure, I start my players at second level. Um, it, cur it, and it gets rid of the, the little bit of a curve between first and second level. First level in fifth edition is really brutal. And that new group that I ran on Friday night, I killed them. I didn't mean to. Uh, they had fought three goblins earlier in the adventure and killed them. They won, they brutalized them. But in the second time around, and they had, they had, um, in the second time, the second time they fought goblins, they fought three goblins again, the exact, exact same stat blocks, everything, but the roles were different. And my players couldn't hit to save their lives. And they didn't save their lives. They ended up having to run away, and one of them ended up getting cut down in a chase, and, uh, and they both died uh, due to poor roles. So unfortunately, they may or may not be able to continue with those characters. We're gonna try to work something out. So I like to start this one at second, uh, second level. There's other options too. The Adventurers League adventures, several of them are designed for very low level characters and they're episodic in nature. You can run them uh, in two or three hours, some of them, or they're split up such that you run sections of the adventure over the course of a two or three hour period which is really nice for shorter game times. I know uh, at my game store that I used to go to, when uh, Adventurers League started up after Encounters ended, we still used the Encounters um, time frame of two hours. So getting a lot done in two hours with an adventure like uh, uh, Storm King's Thunder or um, uh, Tyranny of Dragons, stuff like that, uh, we couldn't get much done in two hours and these adventures became very drawn out, very long. So one of the reasons I left was the the, the time uh, to take to do anything. There was no room for role playing, nothing like we didn't have enough time to play. So these Adventurers League adventures that they uh, release episodically during an Adventurers League campaign, like Tyranny of Dragons, uh, Out of the Abyss, it's Curse of Strahd, all these episode, all of these uh, seasons that they have, they're great. They they they're perfect for this. They come with maps. They come with rules. They're cheap on the DMs Guild website. They're very cheap. They're only a few dollars, for, like four or five dollars for an adventure. That's really cheap. And uh, I think there's, there, don't quote me, but I think there might even be some of them for free. Um, moving on, another thing uh, that I like uh, for adventures, there's this uh, product by Kobold Press called Prepared, which is essentially very short, maybe one, one and a half pages worth of details about an encounter or adventure location that you can insert into any world on your own. And it requires a little bit of improvisation, but I mean, as a dungeon master, I find myself uh, loving that part of the game and coming up with explanations for why, you know, like in their first book, why there might be a, why there might be a flipped over wagon on the side of the road, for example, that, that a bunch of goblins have been using as a hideout. And the first adventure in the first book is really tongue-in-cheek. The goblins know wrestling moves. It's it's lighthearted. It's fun. It's very leaned towards new players. The fifth edition fantasy adventure, uh, Face Sister's Fate, while in my opinion is not the best adventure to run for new players, can be a good way to kick off a campaign. It is a short adventure. You could take maybe one or two sessions to finish it, depending on how the party does. And Again, you don't have to carry much with you. And I'll get into this a little bit more later when I talk about electronics, but uh, some of these adventures you can even fit, um, you can even keep as a PDF on your on your device, your portable, your Kindle, your iPad, Surface, iPhone, whatever you use. Uh, there's uh, There was something out there that I saw not too long ago. I can't remember the, the website. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below when I find it. But it was called the, the One Page Dungeon Contest, and it was a collection of one-shot adventures that all fit on one page. Um, now that, I can't beat that, that's perfect. And those, I think, those are free. And you, if you can search Google for that, you can find that. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll post a link below if I can find the, the actual webpage for it. I'm, I'm sure it's easy. Um, all of their adventures on there were free, and they're, they're well made, very well made. So the next thing that I want to talk about is books. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a very book-centric game, and when I'm at home, I have my cart here on the side of me. Um, I just keep I keep my books that I need for a given night, the adventure book and stuff like that. I keep them here on my cart. 
and I have no there's there's no cost in weight there's no um, you know economy of weight needed for me to take uh, my books anywhere because they're here I don't need to bring them anywhere but when I'm out and about and traveling these things they bear weight and they take up space and their uh, space is at a premium like I said this is supposed to be a minimalist kit now one of the things that I've done in the past I haven't done it in a long time because it was updated recently I, I printed a copy of the basic rules uh, now you can take that with you to answer rules questions. I, I have no problem with that myself at my table if my players want to use the basic rules. The basic rules are available in digital format as well for mobile devices with D&D Beyond now and with the Wizards website having the uh, digital compendium available for uh, searching for rules questions and stuff like that. Twitter for, you know, sage advice and all that. Uh, nothing beats a player's handbook at the table. I will carry a player's handbook. At absolute minimum, I'll take one of these with me. Uh, just because it has character options, if somebody needs to make a character, if somebody showed up late, didn't have a character. Um, I shouldn't be unprepared anyway as a dungeon master. I try not to be. Sometimes I am. This this will save your bacon. I mean, you can get answer most of your 99.9% .9 of your rules questions. You can answer here, and, and, and yes, that statistic is made up. So you could do, you can use th that for sure. The other option is the uh, the rule book contained in the starter set, which is very thin, takes up very little space. And actually, and in this starter set box is the exact size you can fit a player's handbook inside, a monster manual, something like that, if you want. There are monsters included in there, so you don't even need a monster manual. So that brings that brings me to my next topic, which is uh, the monster manual. I don't carry a monster manual with me. Uh, personally, I use my phone. Um, and I'll, again, I'll get into that in, an, in another part of the video. But... Um, the only thing I need out of the, the monster manual are obviously the monsters, the stat blocks. If I'm going to start a new adventure, if I'm going to write an adventure and I'm home, I'll look through the dungeon mask, uh, I'm sorry, I'll look through the monster manual, I'll find a cool monster, I'll write it into the adventure, you know, I'll get all the details I need for that monster, you know, the kind of uh, environment it inhabits and details and so on, and then I'll read up on the monster. And like I, like I did when I ran my previous campaign with the Nine Hells, I was reading up on demons and stuff like that to learn, you know, the the hierarchy of demons and de uh, devils and how, I'm sorry, devils, yes, and fiends and how they work in the Nine Hells. What I use for running my encounters, I use apps on my phone. Now, um, there are other options for um, carrying a monster manual or not carrying a monster manual. For example, the starter set has all the, stat all the stats you need for the monsters contained in the book that comes with it. And a lot of the other adventures do for the specialized monsters that do. So what I would do is I'd look through the book and find the other monsters you need and compile a list and uh, perhaps print out stat blocks beforehand if I didn't want to carry the monster manual. Or you can add the monster manual to the kit, but since we're trying to keep weight down, we're throwing that out. Dungeon Master's Guide, I've read through the Dungeon Master's Guide plenty of times. If I need a random table or something out of it, I'll snap a picture of it with my phone and I'll use that instead, or I will write it up and use the Notepad app on my phone to do that as well. Then there's all kinds of other ways to use that without having to do it. There's a website, uh, donjon.bin.sh, uh, link it in the description below. Everybody who plays Dungeons & Dragons, who's a Dungeon Master, has probably come across this website at one time or another. And it has uh, random treasure generation, which works for many purposes. It's a little wonky in my opinion, it's not it's not perfect and nothing is perfect and nothing should be 100% automatic. The dungeon master should have some say in what happens, in my opinion. But if you're in of that ilk, you can. I've used it and it's worked okay. I might have to hit generate a couple times. I'm not going to let a plat level one party have a, you know, a wish spell or something that uh, overpowered. Um, but certainly worth a try. Another thing that I'll include for my players moving forward is a set of pre-generated characters. Now I have here, uh, the, I have two different kinds. I have the main uh, set of four or five that comes with the starter set, which are fine for a beginning. They're the basic characters. And I think that that's a good start, especially if a person's never played Dungeons and Dragons before. So if these are brand new players, they'll be what I bring with me. Uh, the sheets are easy to read. They have everything you need to level up the character beyond first level. So the person doesn't even need to buy a book. Uh, although they can download the basic rules, again, for free online if they want to make their own character and learn how to do that, which I recommend. I think uh, you're, it makes you a better player if you actually learn and care about the rules. Um, the other option is the 
uh, for me anyway, the pre-generated characters on the Wizards website, they have a set of 16, I believe, uh, all different kinds of race and class combinations. Again, they're, they're pretty easily laid out. They're a little bit differently laid out though, as you can see here, maybe not, the camera's kind of far away, but you can see that they have um, stat blocks like monsters do. So that might be a little bit confusing to players when they roll over to a new character sheet. I know it was for the, the two friends that I ran it for um, the other night. They found them a little bit tricky to read and I think that they'll be a little bit easier to see once uh, I give them actual character sheets, which I did make up for them. And that reminds me, again, uh, dndbeyond.com has a, a great character builder. For me personally, I have the books already. I, I don't I don't want to pay, pay again for the extra stuff, but if you haven't yet purchased the books and you like the idea of having your character sheet stored in cloud and all that, D&D Beyond's a great option. I'm not knocking it at all. I just, I just wish the price was a little bit different. I think it's a great service. The other thing that I'll bring uh, with me, uh, the user uh, More Better, More Purple, who makes a, a pretty much the, for, in my opinion, the best character sheet that's not Wizards official because it's mostly a character builder in PDF form. The damn thing's awesome. But the, one of the last pages of it is this player reference. And he's got the best player reference that I've seen for fifth edition so far. It's got everything on it. It's got rules from the DMG, optional rules, um, you know, uh, spell areas of effect. It's got the rules for death and dying. It's got the rules for exhaustion. Pretty much any rules question a player could have would be answered right there on that sheet and they wouldn't have to crack a book to do so, which is really nice. Okay, uh, another bit of kit that I consider uh, non-optional, dice. You're not gonna play uh, Dungeons and Dragons. For me personally, I if you're going to roll dice digitally, don't, just don't. I, I had it at my table. I used to use uh, the dice roller inside one of the apps that I was running for my monsters and my players hated me for it because the monsters kept rolling absurd numbers and there's something tactile about dice, something um, exciting about seeing a 20 come up on the table and the players cheer. And I remember the organizers, when I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons seriously a few years ago, the organizers of D&D Encounters that I went to, they, the, 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 the wife, uh, the, the husband and the husband and wife team ran it. The wife was out of her mind excited whenever a natural 20 got rolled. No matter if it was her, another player, her husband, another table. It was super exciting. And I, that, that, the thrill of that, the feel of that has always been something that I loved about the table. And just doing that in uh, like roll 20 or something, in my opinion, is just not the same. If, if that's what you gotta use, Go ahead. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything about that. But for me, at my table, if you don't have dice, I have enough for four or five players here in this bag to use at least one set of dice. And I recommend that uh, at a bare minimum. If for me, as a dungeon master, only one set of dice shared between all the players, yes, you can make it work. The starter set comes with a rather nice little set of blue dice, which are fine. Um, but I like to have more dice, and I like my dice to have a little bit of personality as well too. Those are nice. Uh, you know. Nice cheap, mind you, resin dice that I got for I got about seven, five or five to seven sets. I can't remember. It was some random seller on Amazon. It came with five, four or five, five, six, seven. I think it was seven sets. Yeah, seven sets of dice, and it, each it came with one big felt bag and seven individual dice bags. It was meant for a dungeon master to give new players, and it was fantastic. It was it was a steal. I think I paid six bucks for it. Couldn't beat it. The other thing that I like to take with me. For me personally, I like a dice tray. I never used them before, but once I started using them, I couldn't help it. This one I made myself uh, out of a, a mouse pad and some cheap snaps from Walmart, but you can get these for about six or seven bucks on Amazon made of leather and they're stiff, they're really nice and they, fo they fold up. When you use them, you clip them together and the corners form the edges of the tray. And you can see here, grab some dice. It works perfectly. They're not going to go anywhere. And for me, the mouse pad, especially with the mouse pad, it doesn't slide. It doesn't go anywhere. So that's one option. And um, you don't you don't have to take this. See, this this is not 100% necessary. This is for me. It's a little perk thing that I like to take with me to use for my uh, games, for my uh, ad hoc D and D games. Another thing that I consider to be absolutely essential is uh, some scrap paper. Something to write down notes on, a small notepad, uh, you know, a, com uh, a composition notebook, something something small, something compact. Um, 
for me, you know, a full size legal pad is roaching on the territory of too damn big for my for my kit for my needs. I use a small legal pad. It's miniature, miniature, miniature in size, but it's like five by eight. It's really nice. It works. It does the job perfectly. I just write down little notes for NPCs, uh, monster hit points. If a monster runs away and I want to remember the hit points and before I clear it out of my app, good to go. Uh, and uh, pencils. Uh, I carry five to six pencils sharpened. I carry a pencil sharpener. I carry an eraser just in case. And um, Get, use, give those to my players so that they have something to write with. There's no reason for anybody at my table to not have everything they need to play the game. I mean, they have their own needs that they need to meet themselves, they're responsible for themselves, but for me as a dungeon master, pens, pencils, character sheets, adventure, I bring the game to them, and that's what I like. And uh, that's, that's part of what gets me excited as a dungeon master, especially with the new players. Now we're getting into the fun part of the video here, and we're gonna talk about uh, miniatures and uh, area representation on the on the play surface. Okay, so for area representation, the thing that I like to use is a foldable battle map. I used to use the Pathfinder flip map, and I, I loved my Pathfinder flip map. But that was and that was the best solution that I had at the time because it folded up nice and small, nice and flat. And you know that that's a great option. The uh, D and D Adventure Grid. Another great option. I hear that that one's very stiff. I don't. I don't actually own that. Um, I don't have a problem with the stiffness of it. If it's too thick, if it's the, the thickness of a book, then I've, for my purposes, I got a problem with it. But um, I hear it's a good product. I hear a lot of people actually enjoy using it. For me, what I found recently is I saw. I actually first saw Mike Merle's uh, bust this out in a video, and then I saw the user uh, Fistful of Dice use it in a video, and it's this uh, little thing called the the note board, and it's a. It's designed as a presentation tool, but also um, used as a game mat. It says it's explicitly on the, uh, the front uh, cover of it. What I love about this mat, besides the size, is uh, the fact that it's, you know, that it folds up. Um, it folds up to the size of a three by five index card and folds out, you know, pretty large. I actually cut a couple of rows off of it because it was Actually, it's longer than it was than it is wide. I wish it was a little bit wider than it is, uh, but it's 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 a good product uh, and I like using it. Um, I actually plan on doing a review video on this in the future, so I'll get into a little bit more detail about it for that. But um, anything you know, gridded or non-gridded to represent combat, you can use a blank piece of paper to represent combat. What you only and still do it theater of the mind using approximation for movements, distances, uh, you know. Usually I uh, lean towards the players when it comes to certain things, you know, like, can I hit, am I close enough to hit this guy? Yeah, you're close enough to hit him, sure, why not? Uh, because it doesn't matter in the, long, in the long run of the story, it only matters when, you know, something's really gonna affect the plot. So uh, you can use a blank piece of paper to show placement. You can put characters um, just in their relative positions and go gridless, which works fine. You can just use the tabletop, uh, which brings me to my next thing, miniatures. Uh, do you want to use miniatures? Do you have the means to transport miniatures reliably? Uh, do you have the means to protect them so they don't get broken, especially if you painted them, assembled them yourself? I find the pre-painted plastic miniatures, especially those by WizKids, they're very strong, they're durable, they last quite a bit. Some, some of them sometimes rarely break. I've, I've had to fix a couple of them in the past, but it's rare, it doesn't happen very often. For me, I prefer tokens. I made these tokens myself after watching Sly Flourish's video on his kit, uh, one of his most recent kits. He made um, some using some epoxy stickers and some, uh, you know, some chits and stuff that he found online, wood, uh, wooden circles and the like. I'm not going to do that. I didn't do that. I used a, a hole punch, some chipboard, and some cardstock, a little bit of laminate, and that's it. And I found these um, these tokens. It's kind of hard to, to focus, but. I found these tokens, let's see if I can get it to focus. Eh, it doesn't really want to, but I found them online, this uh, website called game uh, gametokens.net. I'll, I'll post the link below. And um, again, it was recommended by him, uh, by Sly Flourish. This is what he used for his tokens. And it's perfect, it worked great. I had no need to go out and hunt something else. The best part about it is they're free. Uh, and they're open source, which, uh, you know, they're licensed under Creative Commons, so you can use them, you can print them, and you don't have to worry about, so you could go to Staples or something like that after compiling a sheet, print them out in, in, on cardstock, get them to print it on very heavy duty card, cardstock for you, punch them out, laminate them, and uh, stick them to some round circles, and you've got tokens. I've got 
I downloaded the Wizards D&D fan site kit, which contained all of the logos for all of the classes. And I, um, I, put, I printed them in black and white. So I have 12 class token, um, cl class icon tokens. I have 12 basic monster tokens numbered one through 12. I have four boss monster tokens, medium sized creatures, one inch by one inch, labeled with a skull so you can tell that they're different than the 12 monster tokens. And I have four large monster sized tokens. I don't, I, not really much of a need to go beyond that. If you need to represent something larger, uh, you can certainly print off something three inches, four inches, five, if you want to go huge or gargantuan. but. If I'm running a 20th level game, which I I've, honestly I've never done, I've never run a high level campaign. Uh, I haven't gotten any group to get that far yet. Um, I would probably, that's probably when I would carry my Tiamat miniature or some such in a large, you know, like a lunch pail or something like that with some, some foam padding to keep it from being damaged. So that I could use that uh, to represent the final battle. And, and it's something that amazing, something that spectacular doesn't happen that often. I'm probably gonna bring some of the terrain that I've built and use that, so. Oh, I almost forgot. One thing about the note board uh, that I really liked is that you don't need to carry an eraser uh, in addition to it. This uh, sleeve that it comes in is the eraser for the note board, which I thought was great. And um, also dry erase markers. I, I don't, these are, these are perfect. I think this is my favorite brand, the Stapler. Uh, these here, again. You can see those. And, um, you know, uh, red, blue, black, and green. All you really need. You don't need all kinds of fancy colors. If you have access to them, sure, use them. I'm, no, I'm never gonna knock anybody for their personal choice and what they use for, uh, you know, running their games. This is just my personal preference. And uh, these work. These are great. They leave a nice color. They're uh, easily erasable. And this is actually the second or third set of these that I've, I've, I've had. Um, and I, I don't think I'll ever buy anything different for using on my battle maps because they just they, they don't they don't damage the bat the battle maps. I think they're acid free, but I can't remember. Uh, good, very well worth the the ten dollar price tag. I actually got these. These are branded. These actually come from Noteboard. I got them with my Noteboard when I bought them. Uh, when I bought it, but uh, they sell them elsewhere. I, the first set I got I got from my uh, game store because they had them on sale. Good brand of markers, highly recommend them. Now, uh, back to miniatures. Uh, now, um, Sly Flourish curates a set of clear plastic miniatures that are flat, that fit into clear plastic bases that you can use that are stand-up miniatures if that's the route you wanna go. A little expensive for my taste. At $68, you do get a lot of miniatures with the with the set, but that's, that's a little bit too pricey. I think for these, uh, I already had the chipboard laying around Printing them out in black and white cost me no money. I already had, you know, you can use GIMP, you can use um, paint, you can use any, uh, anything you have on your computer to make these in the circles and print them out. Uh, I, I'm not knocking that product either. They look really cool. And if I had an extra $68 to throw away in something random, I'd probably buy them. Uh, Pathfinder pawns are another option. I think, I think that for me, that's the most affordable option because it's it's like 50 bucks but you get an insane number of pawns with uh, the kits and they have multiple kits something that I used to use which I don't anymore actually I don't even have it anymore I don't own it anymore was the uh, 4e uh, monster vault which I wish that wizards would reprint uh, or come out with a fifth edition version of because that was my personal favorite was having the little uh, cardboard tokens and all the various different sizes with the adapters to raise a medium creature to large and all that minion monsters it was it was brilliant and it had a number of tokens to represent that stuff i and i wish wizards would uh would consider making that again for fifth edition you know have a like a, a monster compendium or something and have those tokens available it would be i would buy it and snatch that up in a heartbeat for me that's that's the best miniature for my travel games or uh, the best uh solution for my traveling games that's what i would use anyway Okay, so uh, I think the last thing that I want to talk about here is um, uh, digital tools. And um, for me, I, I tried having my game table that I'm at right now was originally intended to have a TV on the underside of it and be a digital game table, and it didn't work out for me. I didn't like it. I didn't have a, a good enough computer to run it with or a good enough tablet to run it with, and I didn't care for it. It, it ended up eating up a lot of my time, and I think my players actually got bored sometimes because I didn't, I wasn't that good at using it, to be honest with you. 
I'm sure other people are, but not me. And um, I just turned this into a regular table for doing the terrain, which ended up working out brilliantly for me. Um, I love doing that even better. But I still use digital. I still make uh, my game maps. A lot of times I design them. Either, either I'll draw them out and scan them in to the computer or I'll draw them in Photoshop outright, which um, I haven't done in a while, but I really I really still, still do like to use uh, digital maps because they, they just, they, they add so much flavor. And I recently purchased uh, Wonder Draft and um, I may do a video on that at some point and I love that program. I've been using that to make my overworld maps and city maps and such. But for me, the tools that I want to talk about specifically are the tools to run encounters. And like I said earlier, when I talked about the monster manual, I don't take a monster manual with me because I use my phone. And I have an app on my phone. I use an iPhone. I have a map, uh, an app on my phone called Encounter Plus, which does have virtual tabletop tools built into it, but it does have an amazing encounter builder and you can import your party from, there's, a, there's another set of apps by Lion's Den called uh, D&D Fight Club or 5e Fight Club and 5e Game Master and you can export XML files from the character builder and import them into this, this app. And you can have your characters in the app, insert them into the encounter and then you can insert monsters and you can add the monsters yourself, which you're supposed to do. It does come with the stuff included in the basic rules though, so that if you do have that access to that app, you do get a cursory amount of basic monsters to use so that you can get your game off the ground. So, you, and I think you can even run the stuff of the starter set in there too, and I'm not sure about that. Again, D&D Beyond is a great resource and I'm not knocking it, but the price point is just too damn rich for me. I have this, it works for me, and tracking my encounters like that works great. The other option, which I have used in the past, but I don't currently, is uh, Cobalt Fight Club, which is, uh, they, I'll, I'll post a link to that down below for sure, because they have uh, an amazing encounter builder of their own. Whatever you choose to do, uh, especially with the minimalist approach to this, um, do what works best, do what you feel comfortable doing, do what you feel like, if you want to lag a lug behind uh, a rolling suitcase full of stuff, which I know DMs who've done that, full of miniatures, full of maps, characters, extra dice. I know people used to carry uh, fishing tackle boxes and toolboxes full of dice. Uh, whether it's a, you know, a peacocking thing or, you know, a, you know, a flex kind of thing, they want to show off how much they got. Hey, cool. Uh, that ain't me. I just want to get the game off the ground and get going. I want to, you know, I want to get my players having fun as soon as possible. And if I can sit down at a table and ex you know spend 15 or 20 minutes just explaining the basics of the game and then get right into it, I feel like the best kind of learning you can do is by doing. That being said, if you're going to carry a digital apparatus with you to do something, make sure you can charge it. Make sure you can keep the battery up. I have a portable battery pack that I carry with me that I keep charged in my car. That way, if I know I'm gonna be somewhere for a while, I can take that with me, and if my phone gets low, I can slap my iPhone in um, airplane mode, and, about, and in about 15 or 20 minutes, it's most of the way charged, especially if it's really low, um, trying to conserve battery. So that helps too, or um, just keep it plugged in, like I'm doing right here, while you're using it, and all the better. The last thing that I wanna talk about, which is optional again, uh, I used to carry my stuff in a, pl in a pa uh, plastic shopping bag, like a, you know, a reusable shopping bag. But this thing is probably the best thing that I've ever used to do it. It's by this company called USA Gear. It just happens to be exactly the same size as one of the fifth edition books, eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 11 and a quarter, or whatever it is exactly. And they fit perfectly in this thing. And as you can see from, from this, it's got all these extra pockets. This is where I actually keep my pens and pencils up here in the lid. Um, it's a relatively small bag. For me, that's great because the larger the bag, the more space I want to use. It's got this little front pocket, which is where I keep my eraser, my pencil sharpener, battery charger, my flip mat. This, uh, the note board actually fits right in here perfectly, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, along with the markers and my tokens, they all fit right here in this little front pocket. And then I have plenty of room in here for everything else, my dice, my, uh, my tablet, if I'm gonna take my tablet and uh, use that. I use a, right now I'm using a Microsoft Surface, but it's getting a little bit old. I plan on buying an iPad at some point and using that. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all good, man. Whatever you wanna use to carry your game in. This is, again, 
last time is this is what I use. So um, whether you're heading to a convention, a game store, or a buddy's house for a night of uh, drinking in D&D, or you're just gonna have a barbecue with the family and you wanna throw together a quick game, whatever Dungeon Master Kit you choose to use, uh, as long as it fills your needs, is gonna be just fine. And um, anything that you put in it, as long as you have a use for it, it's worth being there. And, as, and if it has multiple uses, the better. So that, um, if you like what I'm doing on the channel and you wanna support what I'm doing, head on over to Patreon and consider becoming a subscriber for a dollar or more a month, whatever you want. Uh, you get access to everything that I post, all of uh, you know, extra content, um, behind the scenes footage, polls, uh, more details available there. And if you really wanna support the, if you really wanna support the channel, leave, a, leave a, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and raise, consider ringing that notification bell so you know that whenever I post something new. What kind of stuff do you keep in your DM kit? I'd love to know, hit me up in the comments below. Um, leave it, you know, leave a suggestion if you like this video, if you don't like this video, it's all the same. Dungeon Master, out, peace. I know this is a little bit different. Hopefully we'll get back to crafting next week. Stick around.